going on, play it, Profiler Nation. It's trade gods over time. Jason Allwine and our guest, Memphis. You haven't seen the full episode of me, Jason, and Memphis talking trades and entering trade court. Make sure you go back and do that. But today's overtime session, getting into the weeds, we're talking a little strategy. We are going to break down some of the best strategies for trading for and trading away aging guys like Derrick Henry and Devontae Adams. So let's start with you, Memphis. What are your thoughts? How should people go about these vets, these guys who are on the back nine in fantasy football? Well, sometimes we we ignore greatness, and, and not like intentionally, but patience is a virtue. Right now, for a lot of a lot of dynasty gamers, and we got to remember, not everybody is us as content creators. We got to remember that not everybody is long term dynasty gamers. Maybe we're helping someone who's brand new. And and, and right now, the perception in the dynasty world is is that these are dusty twenty nine and thirty year old running backs and wide receivers. They're they're not fun anymore. But in about two and a half three months, you're going to see monsters that are putting up twenty points a game, give or take, because both of these guys. You know, Derrick Henry, I think, averaged like 19 points a game last year in standard PPR, and and Devontae Adams was right there around 30. They're going to realize, oh, yeah, wait a minute, they are really good at football, and they are worth more. So what you're going to get now, is it going to be like a 5X? No, but more is more. And if you're in a rebuild or you've made a decision during your rookie draft or you made a decision coming into 2023 that you're going to make, you're going to make some changes and you're going to go for a bit of a youth movement, cool. Totally endorse that. Good for you for having the wherewithal to understand that at some point we've got to make decisions on a roster. When you move the young guys is when the hype is on. When you move the young guys is when the games are going on. So in about three months, that'll be October 13th as we record this, we'll be about five or six games in. And you'll be able to see these guys scoring fantasy points and people will be like, oh yeah, I want to win my league. I better go get a vet. Memphis, what is it about the the, the dynasty on season or the NFL off season that just craters these guys? All of a sudden, they forget that they've just been perennial monsters in fantasy. What is it about it? Just everyone just gets enamored with the young guys. Is it just what the content cycles are at that time? What is it? To be honest with you, I, th- I think part of it is is that these people see dynasty fantasy football for some people as entertainment, and that's okay. That is okay. And guys like Devontae Adams and Derrick Henry and, and you know Stephon Diggs and Cooper Cup, and we can go on and on and on. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're not part, they're not entertaining. They're not sexy. They're not fun. It, it doesn't create conversation in your league chat about, oh, hey, I went and got Kendra Miller or I went and got Jordan Addison or Quentin John or whomever. They don't create fun. They don't give that sense of entertainment. I'm different. Um, if you've ever done like a strengths or personality traits test for your job or your career, maybe you administer those for your career. My number one in my personality profile is competition. And the fact of losing because something looks cool would drive me crazy. So I don't see this as entertainment. I play this game to win, but I think part of it, and and guys play for whatever reason you want, because if you play a $50 buy-in, our friends at the FFPC, a $77 buy-in, If you're lucky, depends on what size city you live in, that might be dinner for you and your significant other with a couple of cocktails. 77 bucks. So that's a night out on the town. One league might be like a, like an entertainment for you, and that's fine. You manage it how you want, but I like these older guys because they help me win. I play to win, so that's how I see them. But there's nothing wrong with handling Dynasty how you handle Dynasty. For sure. And winning uh, Fantasy you know, year in and year out, buying some of these vets in the off season is good practice because you know, more often than not the studs remain studs and then the cliff is kind of either obvious or it happens uh, all of a sudden in the season. But we're talking about buying these vets, but I also want to talk about selling some vets. You might have a couple of them on your roster and you're looking to kind of, you know, char off that kind of older crust. You're trying to turn over to a new leaf. So Jason, if you're trying to sell these vets, like what type of approach do you think people, you know, these fantasy managers should take? Yeah, and this is probably bad advice, but I would say don't listen to any really content creators or anyone like telling you who to trade for or anything. You need to come to your own kind of collection of what you want uh, when when you're doing this. I think for me personally, I, I target like 
when we were going through the show sheet here for this, I was kind of thinking about Devontae Adams. So specifically if I'm trading Devontae Adams, and that's what I want to do. I want mm-hmm. to trade him away. I'm deciding personally what young wide receiver I like that I believe in because I don't want to make this trade and end up losing it. And then ultimately it's because I decided to listen to somebody else's advice. Uh, right. Like I want to be able to go trade Devonte Adams for people I believe in. There are some rookie slash year two wide receivers that I like a lot that if I have Devonte Adams, I wouldn't mind trading for them and a little cherry on top. If I could trade Devonte Adams for Jamison Williams, George picks at Pickens, Jackson Smith and Jigba or Quentin Johnston with some fun on top. I think that that would at least get the stew stew started. Right. And then and then I'm starting to feel comfortable about moving on. But of course, there are different players for different people. And ultimately, that's what you have to come down to. But if you can decide that there's a player that you like, that you believe in, you want to get younger, you're ready to rebuild, start looking towards the future. Ultimately, that's a decision you have to make. And you're going to hear tons of different content out there telling you to trade for this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. And then you're just so confused. Go do your own research and choose someone that you believe in. So that way that if you do lose this trade, because it's hard to trade someone like Devontae Adams or Derrick Henry, at least if you do end up losing that trade, you do end up regretting it. You know that you put in your own amount of work. You did it yourself. And it was a decision that you made that you can blame yourself for. And that's at the end of the day, a much easier pill to swallow if I am going to do it. Yeah. Process over results. It's, it's truly the, base principle of all my fantasy strategy and theory and all that stuff is process over results. Now you did bring up game theory. Uh, Memphis was on the game plan. uh, Some, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago. Either way, check it out. It was back in May. Yeah, it was a couple months ago, but we were talking about game theory, dynasty game theory. And we talked about a bunch of different things that you definitely should check out. But uh, part of this game theory, I completely agree with you, Jason, is you should take in all the content that you can handle. But you have to make your own decision. You have to be confident in your own decision making to make the deal. Now, if you just decide that, you know what, I really dig what Memphis says. And I'm just going to straight listen to him here because I'm so on the fence and it doesn't work out. At least, again, your process is sound. Whatever that process is, you have to be able to lean on that, whether it's good or bad. And know that you put in the work and you gave the, the thought work, the thought grinding enough Mm -hmm. that you can live with whatever the results may be. But Jason, I want to ask you something here. We're talking about how the shiny new toys, the young guys have inflated values in the dynasty on season, the NFL off season. Do you find that it's hard to trade away a vet in the summer months? I would say it's very difficult to downgrade them uh, just because I feel like, like Memphis pointed out, the value isn't quite right. But I do think that they are very, very good starting conversations for trades. I leveraged Devonte Adams to get Bijan Robinson, right? Because the Bijan, the guy who had the 101, was like, "Hey, I'm looking at trading the 101." I reached out. He looked at my roster. He was like, "I like Devonte Adams. What could you add?" I ended up having to add Tony Pollard. It was a lot, um, but you know, it is what it is. That goes into the negotiation right, part of the right. game theory. But what you're saying right. is is still rings true, you know, for fantasy gamers. Yeah. Leverage your older asset to maybe get a premier younger asset if you can. But I mean, like I'm not going to go trade Devontae Adams for Hunter Renfro and Jacoby Myers, just because I've decided I don't know which way, which Raiders wide receiver I like, I'm going to get two of them. Like that's a bad process. Uh, But if you can, if you can use it to upgrade, I think that's probably where you're going to find a little bit more success. So I have this friend, uh, and it's totally not me. It's not me. But I have this friend mm-hmm. that doesn't entirely know what it means when people say I had to leverage this player. The use of the term leverage in fantasy football, my friend doesn't really understand that. Memphis, can you explain to my friend what that means? And again, that's totally not me. Well, I mean, leverage just means to basically put the the inertia on your side to to you know leverage. I don't know. I'm, not, I'm, I'm de- definitions are not my thing. I just. I, I think that to, to use Jason's point, content is a tool. Mm-hmm. When content favors your side, use content. 
When content does not favor your side, ignore content. So if you see a positive blurb about a player that's on your roster that you're wanting to move, put that tweet in your group chat. Oh my God, DeAndre Hopkins getting ready to sign in Tennessee. Mm. Great. Put that in, put that in your group chat. Oh, hey, what do you know? Positive news on DeAndre Hopkins. You know, and then when someone does it to you, be like, man, that's just, you know, just whatever. <laughs> You know, and, and I guess my last thing on this is, is that for these guys, like a concept, we talked about this on the game plan. When you get comfortable losing trades, you'll win leagues. Yep. You know, if, if, yep. if you were to trade Devontae Adams straight up today for like, say, Jordan Addison, you lost that trade. Yep. You lost that trade. Today on paper, you lost that trade. Come check back with me in two years. Are you still losing that trade? Maybe you can get a little bit more. You you have to get comfortable with potentially having egg on your face and making a bad deal. Yep. The, the, the more bad deals I've made in my life, the more leagues I've won. And it sounds crazy because it, it, to, to Jason's point, it feels weird moving DeAndre, you know, Hopkins or Derrick Henry cheap. Mm -hmm. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's not just dynasty fantasy football. That's life. And so just yeah. go out there and uh, – I'll hit you with one last Memphisism that I stole from poker great Doyle Brunson. Love sometimes, you, sometimes you got to go out on the limb because that's where the fruit is. Yeah.